good morning everyone uh, so let's get started uh, in the last class we were discussing the the source coding problem or the data compression problem and, uh, and in particular we saw that the we looked at the fundamental limit of compressing uh, any random source right so we modeled the raw, the file the raw file to be compressed as a random sequence we assume that the distribution is known to both the compressor and the decompressor. So this is available for free. And, uh, and using this, the goal is to design the compressor and the decompressor such that either the probability of error is small and of course the rate is, is, uh, is as small as possible. Or we want to design a variable length code for which the, uh, the rate is as small as possible. Right. So, so in the previous class, I gave a variable length compression scheme whose expected length is small. In fact, it turned out to be the entropy of the sequence and, and there is zero error. At the same time, we can, it is also possible to construct fixed length compressors for which the probability of error vanishes with n. As n tends to infinity, the probability of error tends to zero. And, and the minimum rate of compression still turns out to be the entropy of the sequence. Okay, so let's just very quickly recall what the compression scheme was. So I gave a variable length compression scheme. We assume that both the block length as well as the, the, the distribution is known to both the encoder and the decoder. So, so the basic idea was that you you order all the sequences, all the all possible n length sequences in decreasing order of probability or non-increasing order of probability. And, and then you exhaustively assign uh, code words or compressed sequences of length zero, length one, length two, and so on. So, so the highest probability sequence gets the shortest uh, compressed sequence and, and the long, and the, sequence with the least probability gets the longest uh, code word or compressed sequence assigned to it. All right, so this was the basic idea. And then uh, we, we did an analysis of the, of the expected compressed length. We saw that the expected compressed length is equal to, is, is, is at most the entropy of the sequence, H of Xn, where this is the definition of the entropy of the sequence. Right. And then we saw that this is also tight, uh, so up to one bit. So, so this is upper bounded by this particular quantity H of Xn, but it is also greater than or equal to H of Xn minus one, because the only place where we have a, we have this sort of a loss is, is this floor. Right? Okay. So, so now in this class, we'll, we'll explore some more properties of uh, the entropy, the entropy function, and and then we'll also look at fixed length compression and and see what is achievable in that case. We'll again see that uh, the best rate of compression is equal to the entropy. We'll do that in part. So we'll try to look, we'll again try to look at an achievable scheme which gets you close to the entropy. We'll try to see how one might design a compressor for fixed of uh, how how one might design a fixed length compressor with vanishing probability of error and rate close to the entropy. And then later on in the course, once we, once we develop some more tools, we'll see that this is not, it is impossible to beat this. So no matter how you try to construct the compression scheme, uh, if you want the probability of error to be vanishing in N, then the minimum rate that you need is equal to the entropy. You cannot do any, you cannot compress at a rate below the entropy of the source. All right. Uh, so, any questions? Sir. Um, yes. Uh, like this is not related to uh, what you summarized. It's like about the assignment. Um, so, yes. you will be sharing the solution, sir. Uh, yes. So, I'll I'll be sharing it in a couple of days. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, any any other questions? Okay, good. So, 
So we also saw that uh, for an IID sequence, if the sequence is uh, IID, if Xn is IID according to some distribution Px, then, then the entropy of Xn, H of Xn, which is defined in this particular way, actually factorizes into a sum of entropies. So, so H of Xn is equal to N times H of X, right? So, and, and more generally, if let us say that I have H of Xn, in fact, it's it's not very hard. It, exactly the same steps tell you that H of Xn is equal to uh, H of X1 plus H of X2 and so on plus H of Xn if the sequence Xn is IID. Okay, so so let's let's look at this uh, this function, this entropy function, in a little more detail. So so let us look at some properties. Now, if 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 this entropy is to represent a measure of compression, the minimum compressed length, or or as I had uh, proposed earlier, that entropy is a measure of information content of a source. Then, then a basic property it has to satisfy is that it must be non-negative, right? Because after all, the compressed length cannot be non-negative. And also intuitively, if, if you're if you're measuring, say, the information content or the amount of randomness in the source, then it must be a non-negative quantity. So if that is to be true, then entropy must also be non-negative for any distribution. So remember that the entropy, as we defined, I define for any random variable x, which has distribution px, we define the entropy as the summation over all possible uh, realizations of x, px of x log 1 over px of x. OK? And, and as, as I had pointed out in an earlier class, uh, in fact, one needs to be a little careful. Uh, I mean, there's a small technicality involved here because uh, we're, we're assuming that Px, when I write this particular expression over here, I'm assuming that uh, the probabilities are all are, are all strictly positive, right? Because log zero doesn't make sense. So what is, so what is if Px of x is zero for some x, then, then what is px of x log 1 over px of x right so this this is not well this this is not a well defined quantity but we are going to this is going to be an abuse of notation but whenever px of x equal to 0 we will assume that px log 1 over px is equal to 0 okay this is by convention Okay. So this is H of X as we've defined. And, and let us see. So, so is this quantity always non-negative? So, so we know that it is a sum of various terms. It is a sum over all possible X, P of X log 1 over P of X. Now, we know that P of X is, is a probability, right? It's a PMF. So, so what do we know about this? We know that this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. And we know that it is always going to be less than or equal to one. Okay. So uh, anyway, by convention, we have assumed that P, P of X log one over P of X, if P of X is zero, then P of X log one over P of X is also equal to zero. Correct? And, and it is always true that the limit as P tends to zero, P log, 1 over p, this quantity is 0. So this, this is well defined, right? As again, when I say p tends to 0, I'm assuming that p tends to 0 from above, right? From the positive side. So let us assume that p of x is strictly greater than 0. Okay? 
So we know that p of x is strictly greater than zero and it is less than or equal to one. All right. So what about one over p of x? Now this quantity, as we know, well, this is obviously greater than zero. In fact, this is always going to be greater than or equal to one. Right. So p of a, one over p of x is always going to be greater than or equal to one. This because p of x is a, is a probability. All right. So what about log one over p of x? What can you say about this? Greater than zero. Exactly. So this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So that is good, and and we know that p of x is always greater than or equal to zero. So if I sum over multiple, I'm mu multiplying it by some positive number. So so p of x log one over p of x. This is always going to be greater than or equal to zero because log one over p of x is greater than or equal to zero, and p of x is greater than or equal to zero. So if I take the summation over multiple positive non-negative terms, then the result is also going to be non-negative. Right? So this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So h of x, when defined this way, is, is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, any questions? Okay, so this was straightforward. Now another, so, so as, I, as I mentioned, one sort of convention that we will follow is that zero log one over zero is equal to zero. That's sort of redefining x log one over x over here, right? But there is also another sort of abuse of notation that we're, that we're using. So I'm, I'm calling the entropy. So I'm saying that h of x is the entropy of the random variable x. Right? But, but in fact, the way I'm writing it over here, it looks like h, the entropy, is a function of x. But in fact, it is not, right? Because the entropy is actually a function of the distribution. So this would have this is actually a better notation for entropy. Uh, So this is a better notation for entropy, but but unfortunately we are stuck with this notation because many of the textbooks, including the the textbook by Cover and Thomas, uh, it uses this particular notation. This is actually the correct notation, and it would have been a better thing to to use this particular notation for the entropy of of random variable, but. But but then the textbook uses h of x, so, so therefore, and, and many papers, a lot of the literature uses this uh, notation, and, and therefore, we're, we're sort of stuck with this. So, so even though I'm saying it is h of x, it is, it is to be remembered that uh, h of x, the entropy, is not a function of the random variable. It is a function of the distribution of that particular random variable. Right, so h of x is actually a function of p x and not x. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, it, 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 there's something even more. So. So the entropy is invariant to a relabeling. So one very useful property is that entropy is invariant to So what do I mean by this? So it is only a function of the values of the probabilities, right? So, so suppose that I have a random variable. Suppose I have some distribution. Px is as follows. So let us take x to be, let's say, 0, 1, 2. 
okay so this is my alphabet 0 comma 1 comma 2 now px of 0 is let us say half px of 1 is 1 fourth and px of 2 is 1 fourth okay this is some some pmf now what is the entropy of this going to be So can someone calculate and tell me what this and what the value of this or the what entropy is going to be equal to? So 1.5. Sorry? 1.5. 1.5. Okay. So 1.5. Okay. So now suppose I just sort of rearrange these things. So, so let's assume that now I have a new distribution where qx of 0 is 1 fourth, qx of 1 is half, and qx of 2 is 1 fourth, right? So then what is the entropy of this corresponding to this distribution? 1.5. It's still going to be 1.5, right? So, so really, it doesn't matter what the random variable is, right? All that matters is what are the probability values. Now, now it could be that px of 0 is half, px of 1 is 1 fourth, and px of 2 is 1 fourth. It could also be that maybe px of 100 is half, 101 is 1 fourth, and 102 is 1 fourth, right? So it, it doesn't matter which, what the values of the random variable is. Ultimately, what matters is that there is one value which takes, uh, which uh, so one value that the random variable takes with probability half, one value that the random variable takes with probability one fourth, and one variable one value that it takes with probability one fourth. So therefore, the entropy is a function only of the probability multiset. So in this case, it is just the set multi-set of half, one-fourth, one-fourth, right? So one of the probabilities is half, one of the probabilities is one-fourth, and one of the probabilities is one-fourth. That is it. That is all that h is a function of. Now, which, which value it takes with probability half, which value it takes with probability one-fourth, and which other value it takes with probability one fourth is irrelevant. The entropy is 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 in the uh, entropy is in fact uh, invariant to that, right? How how these are mapped. So that's that's a that's an important concept, and in some sense, that makes sense, right? So so whether you toss one coin, right? If it, if it is one biased coin, and and you want to say. Uh, you want to say that this experiment contains some information or, or the toss of a coin uh, gives you an, some information. If I take another coin, right, with the same bias and then toss it, then, then that experiment also gives you the same amount of information, right? It's a different coin, but if both have the same bias, then you're getting the same amount of information. It doesn't matter which coin it is, right? So, so therefore, the entropy has this property. So first, entropy is non-negative. Second, the entropy is only a function of the probability multiset, or it is invariant to a relabeling, right? And that is important. Now, uh, now recall that the entropy, h of x, 
is as we have defined it is summation x in x p of x log 1 over p of x right uh, and and what is important over here is the base of the log right so we have as the way we have defined we are always taking a log to base 2 and and this is important because and and remember where did we, where did this log to the base 2 come from this log to the base 2 came from our scheme right so now let's go back yeah so so log to the base 2 came from this particular property so we we proved this and ultimately uh, the log to base 2 came from this particular step right so remember that the expected length was summation over all px floor of log to base 2 of i right and that is because the compressed sequence is now in bits right we're assuming that the compressed sequence is a sequence of bits and and that is exactly why we have log to the base 2. And then we use the bound on i, which is i is always going to be less than or equal to 1 over p of x, right? Or p of x n. So, so if, if the compressed sequence, if, if instead of viewing the compressed sequence as a sequence of bits, if we had used a different alphabet, maybe we allowed 0, 1, and 2, or, or maybe some other digits right if we assume that it, it could be a sequence of ascii characters right then then this would not have been locked to the base 2 it would have been locked to the base whatever the size of the compressed alphabet is right so so the source of the entropy is the is uh, or the source of this log to base 2 in the definition of, of entropy really depends on how you are measuring the length of the compressed sequence so uh, uh, the, the way we have defined, this is the expected length in bits, right? Viewing the compressed sequence as a sequence of bits. Now, if the compressed sequence was not a sequence of bits, but, but a sequence of say 0, 1, 2 or 0, 1, 2, 3 or, or any other alphabet, then this base would have changed. So, so therefore, the, the entropy therefore depends on how you are measuring uh, the length of the compressed sequence so, so in what is the alphabet of the compressed sequence and therefore the entropy also has a unit so whenever you are taking log to base 2 you we assume that this is in bits okay so so when you're talking about the entropy you don't we don't just say the entropy is 1.5 we say that it is 1.5 bits Now, sometimes, uh, again, for, for matters of convenience, uh, we sometimes take log to the base E, right? So if we take, we define the entropy as log to the base E, then, then, then this is measured in what is called NATS. Okay, so this is just a unit for uh, the entropy. So if, if you have log to the base 2, then the entropy is measured in bits. If, if you're taking the entropy to the base E, then this is measured in nats. Okay, but most, so, so these are sort of two common units in which the entropy is measured. So we'll define some more quantities as we go along. I'll define something called the mutual information and then the KL divergence and all of them involve log terms. So, so whenever we are taking log to the base 2, we'll always measure these quantities in bits. Whenever we're taking log to the base e, it is, it is going to be measured in nats. Now, in this course, we'll always assume that the, the base of the logarithm is 2. So even in case I don't explicitly specify what the base is, we'll assume that, that it is always going to be to base 2. And, and we're measuring entropy and mutual information and KL divergence in bits. OK. Uh, is that clear? Any questions?
Okay. So, so let's maybe do a couple of quick examples and then we'll proceed. Okay. So, so let us assume that X is the uniform distribution. Okay. There is some alphabet. Uh, so let's assume that it is uniform over some alphabet script X. Right. Maybe the size of X is M for some number. Okay. Uh, so can someone calculate and tell me what the entropy is going to be equal to? So, so firstly, log what log yes. log yes, log yes log exactly log. right. So, so what is p p x of x? It is going to be one over m for all x. Right. So this is the probability mass function. So this is going to be summation over all possible x, one over m log to base two. 1 divided by 1 over m. So this is summation over all x of 1 over m log m to base 2. But then there are m elements in the alphabet. And therefore, this is just going to be log m to base 2. OK, so that is fine. Now, so that is good. So so if, if the, if the uh, if the, if the random variable is uniformly distributed, then the entropy is equal to log m to base 2, where m is the size of the alphabet. In fact, uh, in, a, in a few classes from now, we'll see that if you look at any distribution on m elements, the entropy is always going to be less than or equal to this. We will show that h of x is always going to be less than or equal to log of the cardinality of x. We will formally prove this later, but but this tells us that the entropy is maximized when when the distribution is uniform. So the farther, in some sense, the farther away it is from a uniform distribution, the smaller the entropy, and 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 we'll see that later on. Okay, so this is the uniform distribution. Now, so this is assuming that the input, the alphabet, or the, the cardinality of the set is finite, right? But what happens if the cardinality of the set is infinite, right? Does it mean that the entropy is always infinite? So let us take x equal to, say, 1, 2, 3, so on all the way up to infinity, OK? So this is just the set of all positive integers, OK? And uh, maybe let's just look at some. Uh, a PMF on this. So, so let us look at a geometric random variable. Okay, uh, for convenience, maybe we'll take. Okay, so, so p of x is one over is half raised to the x. Okay, So the probability of seeing a 1 is half. Probability of seeing a 2 is half square, which is 1 fourth. Probability of seeing 3 is, is uh, 1 over 8, and so on. Okay, so, so firstly, is this a valid PMF? Yes, sir. Yes, it's a valid PMF, right? So the summation overall x equal to 1 to infinity, p of x is half raised to x, which is equal to 1. OK, so now what is the entropy going to be equal to for this random variable?
sir it's of the form summation n by 2 par n uh, uh. uh n by 2 par n sorry n by 2 uh n by 2 sir okay. so so you're saying it so it's going to be summation x equal to 1 to infinity uh 1 by 2 to the x log 1 over 1 by 2 to the x which is summation x equal to 1 to infinity uh x divided by 2 power x right uh so how do you evaluate summations of this form i think someone also already told told the answer what is the answer going to be yes did someone say what this is equal to 1 by Okay, so how do you evaluate such a how how do you evaluate such a series? Right, so you have summation x equal to one to infinity x divided by two power x, right? Or or in general, if someone gives you summation n equal to one to infinity of uh, something n times p to the power of n. Sir, <clears throat> sir, yes. in this, um, uh, like it will be like um, it's like x by two power x, no? So something like Correct. when we take from x one to infinity, it's like one by two plus two by two square plus three by two. So Correct. then that one by two will retain. Then that two, three, four in the numerator, we will split it as like one plus something. Okay. Um. um but how does that help uh, we will get, we can separate like and like those terms into 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 2 cube okay and... but then i have many more terms right <laughs> it's an agp sequence okay so so you just use so how would you derive suppose i you had to derive from scratch so okay so so we we all agree with this right so what is n equal to 1 to infinity uh say p power n so for any p between 0 and 1 strictly less than 1 uh it's like a by 1 minus r uh, okay so what is a and what is r here a is uh, p uh mm -hmm. uh and by 1 minus p only okay so p by 1 minus p so we know this right okay fine so so let's see if we can derive this from this okay uh, i now somehow need to get this right so a, a, a simple trick is the following so n into p power n i can write this as uh, summation n equal to 1 to infinity p i take 1 p outside n into p to the power of n minus 1 which is p into d by dp of summation n equal to 1 to infinity of p power n you agree so just read it in the same thing i had summation n equal to 1 to infinity n p power n minus 
n p power n minus 1 I know is d by d p of p power n. And since the derivative is a linear operator, I just take it out. All right, so this is p times d by dp of, well, I know what is p over 1 minus p, correct? So can you evaluate this and tell me what this will be? One by one minus p whole square. Uh, one by one minus p the whole square. Okay. Um, into I think into that p. Um, into p, right? So, so let's we do this. So d by dp. So it is one by one minus p plus p by one minus p the whole square. Uh, there's a minus 1, minus 1 by 1 minus p the whole square times minus 1. So these two get cancelled. So this is p into 1 minus p the whole square, 1 minus p plus p. So this is p divided by 1 minus p the whole square. Okay. So, so in general, if I have n into p power n, summation n equal to 1 to infinity, n into p power n, it is just p over 1 minus p the whole square. So, so that's how you would evaluate this. But but again, as uh, someone pointed out, it is it's just an AGP. So you can use the expression for the AGP, but then if you don't remember what, what the expression is, then again, deriving this is an easy task. Okay, so so it's p over p by one minus p the whole square. So in this case, if I if I plug it in here, what what do I get? Two. Two get. Uh, you get two. Right. So it is two bits. Okay, uh, any questions? All right, so this is an example where uh, the alphabet is infinite, right? So here we know that, now, now let's sort of think about what this means. Right? So we, we just mentioned that uh, if I have an IID sequence, Right. If I have an IID sequence and I want to compress this sequence, then then basically if I have a sequence of length n, then I can compress it to a sequence of length uh, h of x n. I have a sequence of length n. I have x n. I can compress this to yes. Uh, any questions? Okay, so so if I have a sequence of length n, then I and then I can compress this to a sequence of length k, where k is close to h of x n, right? Okay, h of x n. Again, loosely speaking, because uh, uh, so I, I haven't. So we'll we'll see a little more of that when we come to fixed length compression. Uh, but but this of course holds if if the alphabet is fi is in is finite right because after all we sort of sorted out all the sequences in decreasing order of probability and then so on but but then this this approach works if even if we tolerate a very small probability of error right and in fact that 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 uh, the variable length approach also works. Uh, so, in fact, the expected value of k will be equal to h of xn. 
Now, okay, so all of this is fine. So Xn is compressed in this particular fashion. So if so, so this expected H of Xn is if for an IID sequence, this is n times H of X if the sequence is IID. Okay. And, and in general, I also claimed without proving that this is going to be less than or equal to n times log cardinality of x. Right? So if I did, did absolutely no compression, then, then this would be the, the length of the sequence. right? Uh, so this would be the number of bits I would need to, in order to represent it without any sort of compression. I represent each, uh, each symbol using log cardinality of x bits. There are n symbols, so I'll need a total of n times log cardinality of x bits. And this is assuming that the cardinality is finite. Now, right just now, we looked at an example where the, the alphabet is infinite. It is a set of all positive integers, right? So if we were to sort of represent it, try to represent it in the uncompressed form, obviously even one symbol would require an infinite number of bits, right? But, but the entropy turns out to be finite. It is just two bits. So what this means is that on average, if you wanted to represent, if you wanted to look at this in the compressed form, then this would just require, so, so the geometric, if I look at an IID geometric half sequence, this requires just two N bits on average. Again, this qualifier is important on average because after all, there are an infinite number of symbols. So in the worst case, it will require an infinite number of bits. But on average, if you look at the expected length of the compressed sequence, it is going to be much, much smaller. It's just going to be two N bits. Okay. So, so this is sort of the distinguishing feature between the average case behavior and the worst case behavior. And, and that is, in fact, this average case behavior, which actually lets us, allows us to compress a particular sequence. Because on average, it's going to, the sequences are going to behave very well. In the worst case, they may behave badly. In the worst case, of course, you need these many bits in order to represent the source. But on average, in most cases, you're going to require a fewer number of bits. The probability that you will require these many bits is going to be actually be very small. Okay. Any, any yes, questions? Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, I saw this. Uh, the last but one line. Uh, can you just explain it once? Like, uh, what you written? Xn compress CK. Like. Okay. So I have a sequence Xn. Okay. Each, where each Xi is comes from some alphabet, uh, calligraphic X, and. And this Xn is compressed to some sequence CK. So this is a compressed file, right? Which consists of K bits. Now, depending on the actual realization of the raw file, the length of the compressed sequence could be different if I'm using a variable length compressor, right? But I know that on average, so the expected value of K of Xn, we just saw in the previous class that expectation of K of Xn is is roughly equal to h of x n. Right? It's within one bit of h of x n. Right? And we also saw that h of x n is equal to n times h of x if x n is an IID sequence. Right? Uh, exactly. Correct. And and also if, if if you didn't compress it at all, if you sort of wanted to represent the sequence in bits in the uncompressed form, then how many bits would you require? So there are, each symbol can take these many possible values, right? So if, if cardinality of X equal to M, then you know that you need, there are M possible, there are M possible values that, that X can take. And so in order to represent them in bits, you would need log m bits. In fact, 
seal of log m bits. So this is at most, so to represent n symbols, you will need at most n times log m bits. Right? And the entropy, as, as I claimed, is always going to be less than or equal to log cardinality of x. So, so even though in the even though the total number of possible outcomes of x n is n is two to the this, you, and in the worst case you need n log m bits to represent it. On average, you need far fewer number of bits because you're using a variable length compression scheme. Right? Because you're using a variable length compressor, the expected compressed length is in fact much smaller than the worst case. It is just n times h of x. So this um, n of um, n log m to base 2 is for uh, uniform length. Correct. So if, if the distribution is, is uniformly distributed, if, if x is uniformly distributed, then anyway you will need these many bits. Correct. Okay. But, but if you think about it, forget about the distribution for now. Uh, if you had to just represent it, right? So, so let us say you have how many possible values? You have 1, 2, 3, up to m, right? You have m possible values. And you wanted to represent each of these using a fixed number of bits, but using the smallest number of bits. So how many bits would you need? Log base 2. Correct. You need log m to base 2, right? So if, if you had, let us say, four possible values, if there are four possible values, then you need two bits to represent each value, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. If you had five possible values and you had to represent each of these using a fixed number of bits, then you would need... you need three bits, right? So in general, for any M, you will need seal of log M to base two number of bits, All right? No matter what the distribution is, if you just wanted to represent it using a fixed number of bits, then you will need seal of log M to base two. Okay, and, and that is where in some sense this is coming from. But h of x, as, as I've claimed, it is much smaller than log m to base 2. And, and therefore, this is the savings that you get when you compress. So if, if you wanted to represent it in its uncompressed form in, in binary, then you would need these many bits. But when you compress it, you go down from n log m to n h of x, where h of x is, could in, is in general much smaller than log m. And, and in particular, if M is very, very large, as in this example, if it's a, if it's a geometric sequence, then the, the alphabet size is infinite. But on average, if you try to compress it, the entropy is finite. And therefore, on average, you need only two N bits to represent a random sequence. Is, is that clear? Are there any questions? So, so in some sense, uh, all of this is happening. So, we're, so we're getting some savings. Whenever we're talking about compression, uh, we're getting some savings because we're assuming that the sequence is random, and and in some sense, if you think about it, if you look at, say, English text, it does behave kind of like a random. It's not exactly random, but but there is a lot of structure to it. And that is why we can model it as a random sequence. So, so even though, say, English text is not an IID sequence, it, it is still can still be reasonably well modeled as a Markov chain. Uh, and in fact, a Markov chain of not very high order. And, and this, this so a simple example is that, so, so let's assume that 
someone told you that the first letter so suppose that you had to predict uh the next letter in the sequence of an english word okay if you start with the letter q what do you think the next letter is going to be so this is a word it's an english word you and, and the next letter yeah exactly right so if so q is almost always followed by u all right and 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 you know that so so if i have a if suppose that it starts with a then it's it's very rare that it's going to be a z it could be uh a b or a c and so on right so so in so in, in many cases if someone gives you half a word then with with reasonably reasonably good accuracy you can predict the next letter in the sequence right so if you played a game like hangman if you, if someone tells you some of the letters in the sequence you can predict some of the other letters in the sequence all right and that is because there is a lot of structure in the english alphabet so 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 the letters are not independent of each other but in many cases given the the recent past so 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 for example uh, if if you go to google right you just open google.com and then you try to try type something in the search bar so google automatically starts predicting what you're going to type next right so that's true in google and even if if, if, if when you're using a smartphone there is the auto completion feature or or, or the, the the predictive uh, feature in your in the in the the google keyboard or or whatever keyboard you're using right so so it is possible to predict given the given the the recent past the recent num characters that you have typed you get a better and better prediction right it in fact that feature is also there or, or in uh, gmail now so when you are typing an email you see that uh, gmail tries to predict what you are going to fill in next and in many cases it's it's a pretty good prediction right so it's possible to predict what you will type next not not of course you can't do it with 100% accuracy but but it's still pretty good which means that there is a lot of structure given the recent past which is also sometimes called the context uh you can predict what the next symbol is going to be so so therefore one can estimate the probability that you will that the next character is something so the probability that xi plus 1 equal to something given the recent past so x1 x2 up to xi all right and and in fact uh you don't even have to go from xi all the way up to x1 in many cases xi plus 1 equal to something given just xi xi minus 1 up to xi minus k for for a reasonably small enough k this is this this is a good enough uh so this which is sometimes called the context for xi plus 1 so a, a reasonably short context is is sufficient to predict uh, xi plus 1 and 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 xi plus 1 in many cases is independent of everything else before the context okay and and that is why we can we have good text compressors in the first place right and and these text compressors work well for for english text and and many kinds of sources but they're not guaranteed to work for all kinds of sources all possible sources there are certain sources which can be which cannot be compressed very well using zip so for example if you try to compress a video or or in most images using zip you'll see that you don't get much of a a gain right in many cases the the zip file will have the same size or sometimes even slightly larger size than the original jpeg file or the uh, the mp4 file correct and that is because they're designed for uh for text compression all right so in the next class we'll we'll look at fixed length compression 
and uh, so fixed length compression with a vanishing probability of error and and we'll see that uh, even in that case we ultimately end up with the same quantity if we want to look at the minimum rate of compression the minimum rate of compression still turns out to be the entropy of the sequence so so these are two different kinds of compressors variable length compressors and fixed length compressors but but eventually you end up with the same quantity which is the entropy and and that gives a strong reason to believe that the entropy really measures the information content of the sequence right and and ultimately as when we look at fixed length compression we'll see that all of this is is tied to this notion called typicality so random sequences of of large enough size they behave in a very particular fashion it, it's not arbitrary with very high probability things happen there is there is structure in randomness even though it's a random sequence it could even be an iid sequence so the components could all be independent of each other but even then there is some structure to it so uh, just a simple example is that if you take uh, if you toss coins then with very high probability the number of heads is going to be roughly n by 2 if where n is the number of tosses all right and that and that is really what lets us obtain some amount of compression all right so we we'll stop at this point uh, are there any questions so that compression which you uh, were saying now like one like probability of xi plus 1 equal yes. to something given the past uh, that content so that is related to this markov chain thing. yeah it's a markov chain so so if you look at english text it is a good model for english text is is a markov chain and in fact one can explicitly compute the probabilities of uh, of of these these conditional probabilities if you take any piece of english text you will see that it's roughly the same so so a, a very simple test is that you take a large you take a novel and uh, even compute the empirical frequencies of of various letters right uh, you compare that for two different texts you see that they're not too different from each other they're roughly the same okay and, and that in some sense is the structure of the english language itself any other questions okay so if not uh, then let then let's stop here uh, see you all in the next class no uh, sir yes so uh, just want to ask you like uh, maybe at the end so so, so what happened is like uh, last week one of my friend got covid and i had to Admitted to the content.